ABC. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with an attack on Americans serving overseas. There's been an explosion. An explosion occurred this afternoon at the United States military housing complex near Dharan, Saudi Arabia. Our best information at this time is that there are many injured. There have been fatalities. We do not yet know how many. Bin Laden was the chief suspect. In the spring of 1996, President Clinton signed a top secret order to shut down bin Laden's network. But his threat of violence escalated dramatically in 1998 when bin Laden called for a jihad against the Jews and others he called crusaders. He said Americans, including civilians, should be killed by Muslims anywhere in the world. In May of 1998, Miller questioned bin Laden about the disturbing fatwa targeting American civilians. American history does not distinguish between civilians and military, not even women and children. On August 7, 1998, the eighth anniversary of the arrival of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia, there were massive explosions at the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. The fatwa applies to all those who assist and support in killing the sons of Muslims. The investigators today began piecing together the remnants of the truck that carried the bomb, looking for clues that may answer the critical questions, who made it and how. Now, as for how all this is playing out on Capitol Hill and the Republican plans to issue the Clinton videotape testimony, here's CBS News Chief Washington correspondent Bob Schieffer. Good evening, Bob. According to the sources, the report focuses almost entirely on the president's relations when he denied having sexual relations with Lewinsky, as it was defined by Jones's lawyers. There is no basis for impeachment. Brave words, but in fact, the White House is gearing up for a desperate impeachment battle. 213 people, including 12 Americans, died, and 4,500 people were wounded. After the bombings in Africa, Osama bin Laden was public enemy number one. In August of 1998, the White House was looking to retaliate. The United States launched an attack this morning on one of the most active terrorist bases in the world. There is an enormous weight on the Congress now. The Independent Counsel's report, as we've said before, is the hottest political potato around. Prosecutors are also trying to show that it is Lewinsky's voice on hours of taped telephone calls in which she allegedly claims a sexual relationship with the president. She has agreed to be fingerprinted by the FBI. She will give samples of her handwriting and allow the FBI to record her voice. The Republicans say this will give Americans a better context in which to judge whether the president is telling the truth. But the committee's Republican majority has the votes to release the tapes. The fact is neither the American people nor the members of Congress know this case thoroughly yet. The 19 Americans who were killed came home today to be claimed by their grieving families. We will not rest in our efforts to find who is responsible for this outrage, to pursue them and to punish them. That the report contains a detailed narrative of events involving the president and Monica Lewinsky. This is a very serious constitutional question and should be dealt with with the greatest of concern. He was extremely sympathetic to toward any attacks against the Americans. Uh, the man hates the American policies in the region. In November of 1998, the United States brought indictments against bin Laden the U.S. now offered a $5 million reward. But with the Republicans in the majority, every expectation is the tape will be released uh, before the end of the week. It was in that deposition that Mr. Clinton first said that he had never had sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. Our strong belief is that the public has the right to know. Has the gentleman from Illinois yielded to the gentleman from Michigan for the purpose of that request? to conceal and not produce uh, the gifts that you mentioned, and to try to get Monica Lewinsky a job. Now let me get this straight. President Clinton was involved in an illicit sexual affair in the White House with a young White House intern of tender years. President Clinton subsequently assured all America that he did not have an improper relationship with that woman. What we've done today is to 
open this up in accordance to the mandate of the House. There were talks at the Capitol today on a timetable for the impeachment process. By having hearings in our constitutional subcommittee, uh, try to update the current thinking on impeachable offenses as a guide. A militant Islamic group published new terrorist threats against Americans in a London-based Arabic newspaper. Afghanistan refused to turn over a Saudi Arabian exile suspected of masterminding the August 7th bombings at the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. They had three principal issues. One was to remove the U.S. military presence from Saudi Arabia. The other was to end the U.S. support of Israel. Uh, particularly as it affected negatively the Palestinians. And three was, at that time, an immediate halt to the bombing of Iraq. I, I'm not going to ask specific questions relative to this document, other than that there is something being handed out contradicting that uh, the president tr made an attempt to hide evidence of the uh, gifts that he may have presented to Ms. Lewinsky. And I will uh, see this, ask that this be made a record of, of the hearing given the nature of the events, which are undisputed, of what happened during that Oval Office visit by Ms. Lewinsky to uh, the President over the holiday period. Assess the truthfulness, uh, specifically of Monica Lewinsky, Betty Curry, and Vernon Jordan. I think your referral uh, sets forth in great detail a pattern of calculated and sustained misconduct by the President of the United States. Together we must also confront the new hazards of chemical and biological weapons and the outlaw states, terrorists, and organized criminals seeking to acquire them. But if we say that lying about sex in court is acceptable or even expected, then we have made our sexual harassment laws nothing more than a false promise. He continued his defiance toward the U.S. and delivered a chilling message. He said, we want to pass a message to President Clinton that the war has not yet started. And we will answer this raids with deeds, with action, not with words. September 9th, 1998. When did you first hear any information to the effect that a tape recording existed of a woman, any woman, who claimed to have had a sexual contact with President Clinton? When she would say, I was with the President of the United the States, States, she would could identify a phone call coming in with a member of Congress whose nickname was she one could month recall later, a phone call given the in from someone from Florida who was a sugar girl and what tied to a specific young white house then turned into corroboration to uh, the president yeah. over the holiday period. And that uh, the Congress will move forward in a calm and methodical way to seek justice. And I, I don't think people uh, want this Congress to deal with a constitutional issue based on the latest overnight poll. Mr. Speaker, by direction of the Committee on the Judiciary, I call up House Resolution 611 and ask for its immediate consideration. House Calendar Number 281, House Resolution 611, resolved that William Jefferson Clinton, President of the United States, is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors Articles of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and of the people of the United States of America against William Jefferson Clinton, President of the United States of America.